last bit of the talk is about the membrane here. And so a lot of applications don't require electrons, they require membranes. And so it's interesting to think about electrochemistry in membranes and driving processes like a cell membrane, where chemistry have this every interface between the inside and outside of the cell, and where the sort of difference of concentration, for example, can produce the drive chemical processes. So we, we decided to take our polymer and we put it not as a big film, but because it's quite difficult to synthesize, we decided to use only a small amount of it. So we, we took a plastic film, and the plastic film, we use a laser, we punch a little hole. And so as you can see, it's a tiny hole here, for a micrometer, and, and we fill that hole with our polymer. And we can then study how the ions can go across this polymer and move in solutions. That's the idea. And we can also study the pH, the effect of pH, and the mobility in this polymer. We already found that we have a change in pKa10. So if the polymer is simply on the surface, we can find there's a switch in behavior. And so one pKa is about 10. With this experiment, we can see another kind of switch. We can see that the resistance of the polar changes in about pH 4. And so we get two distinct pKa's. And so I, I think of this as the first pKa and the second pKa. Two nitrogens strongly interact. And, and this kind of first PK is more interesting than the second PK because it gives us some very interesting effects. First of all, what happens in different solutions with this polymer? We protonate, we deprotonate. If you measure the ET isotherm, we get an interesting pattern. The blue pattern here is with acid treatment, and the, uh, the red, uh, red, red sort of pattern is. is with uh, alkaline sodium hydroxide treatment. What this is, is actually the pore size distribution. So you can see the pore size distribution has the same kind of pattern, but we have more micropores in the acid treatment. So the acid is sort of protonating and sort of keeping the polymer part of it. You create a bit more space, there's a bit more porosity in the presence of the acid that is protonating. And in the electrochemistry, this also sort of comes, comes to play. And so this is really the, the sort of behavior of ion flow in, the, in this membrane material. So if this is first a symmetric case. If I put on both sides the same solution, sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, I see this kind of, this kind of curve. So you can see it's symmetric. If I go to positive potential, I push sodium this way and hydroxide this way. If I go to negative potential, it's the other route, and the ions just flow. It's not very exciting. If I put acid, so if I put acid one side, acid the other side, I get a bit less current. And what happens, I think, is we have a protonation of the polymer, and only the anions move. Around. So the chloride moves this way, or the chloride moves this way. So that's also almost symmetric. But very interesting is if I make it asymmetric. So now if I put one side of some chloride, this side, sorry, hydroxide, sorry, one side, sorry, uh, hydrochloric acid. So it's acidic here, it's alkaline here. And so if I apply one way potential, I can see I get a good current, so it's open. If I put the current, if I put the voltage the other way, it's closed. And the same happens the other way around. If I switch the membrane around, I get this behavior here. So on one side, I get good current, and then at about zero, it stops. And and when I saw this, I thought, that looks like a diode. And diodes usually are electronic elements, and they are just for, um, for electron flow. And so what happens for the electron flow also happens in these kinds of fields. And so my, my suggestion is that we have, in, in one case, a uh, sodium flow and chloride flow, and we have actually protonation, protonation because the hydroxide is not pushed into the film. But if I change the potential the other way around, we have then hydroxide removing the amine, or if you like, the pore, the proton will push out, and we end up with an isolation or insulating layer, depletion layer. So this depletion layer then stops the flow of the ions. And, and so there's a lot of things we can do with this. It's very early days. We've just done this for a few weeks now, and, and we, we sort of just play with the system. And we found something like a flip-flop. 
And so don't ask the way we observed this. It was just this sort of idea to try this out. We thought if the membrane is blocking, if you have an adhesion layer basically where there's an insulating layer, could we find molecules which can, which can breach the layer? And so in the in sort of most sort of imaginary case, imagine an stem of DNA. If DNA can sort of enter and sort of go through and create a pathway for ions, we should be able to be current. So are there molecules which can we can give us current? And and so this phytate molecule is the one used as a polyphosphate. We put phytate into the hydroxide and we got very interesting behavior. This is the voltarogram. So one side is conducting easy. This is the side which used to be blocking, but now you can see it's actually going with blocking first, then it's switching on, and then it stays on, on the way back it stays on, and then it goes and switches back. So in this region here, we have a switch. We can switch on and off, and we can do this as a sort of sequence. So we can apply one potential, and if it's down here, it's off. And then we apply another potential, and then it's on. And so you can say on, off, on, off, on, off. So the membrane switches like a memory element. So it's behaving like a flip-flop. But yeah, I think there's, there's a lot more interesting things we can do with this. And I'm just at the beginning, so exploring this. And I'm still thinking of different kinds of devices we could do. We could set up with these diamond uh, uh, systems. Maybe we can do uh, photodiodes, photodiodes. We can design the course in some way, maybe change the PKA to, to adjust the behavior of these materials. And there will be applications in memory membrane devices, analysis based on selected membranes, maybe separation in polarizable membrane membranes, generally some sort of IOE technologies based on course membranes. Okay, just a summary and I'll go ahead. So I hope. I mean, I convince you that the pores are very interesting. There are lots of things going on in the pores. It's not always beneficial, it's always interesting. But sometimes there are also some very interesting and beneficial processes. And so the first part was about the solid materials. So if you have stable or self-healing materials, that would be a really good material to study and to explore more than other sort of properties. And then we could employ MOFs with intrinsic framework connectivity. Uh, so we have both electron transport and to bring ions and make it easier in the whole process. Uh, we can embed new molecular systems as active components into the MOF structure once the ion flow and the electron flow works. But for me, most interesting at the moment is the spin material, which offers new materials for sensing for, for membrane processes. So I still hope we can develop electrochemical processes where we have membranes and we have a flux of material, maybe CO2 coming in, the methanol coming out of some kind of process based membranes. And so I think all the people who have done the work and people who pay for all the work, and that's the group just in front of a church in Wales. We just had a conference in June in Wales, which is a town far from Bath. And, um, and so yeah, thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot. I have a question. Uh, what about to exchange the protons by different cations? And uh, you know, because uh, uh, in in uh, in water solution, uh, the protons mechanism describes the the, the displacement of, of of protons, and uh, see that this is a very very fast process. And so uh, I, I'm realizing if there is some uh, large change in the behavior of the systems uh, when it change the proton by uh, alkaline method, for example. That's interesting. Idea. Yeah. You're thinking about the membrane, for example, what happens yeah. if we have other catalysts or if you have any more stuff, let's say, okay, if you sort of yeah, modify the membrane to put a different catalyst on, yes. Um, I would be very interested, yes. My question is, uh, what exactly is what you know by the experimental aspect of the work? You show us always only the current. And you make a, a lot of comments about the volcanic coming only from the car, the micro uh, uh, This means you have a, a very high reproducibility of your electron. Uh, 
my question is how do you fight with the problem that you don't know the area, the related area, between two experiments? And how you can deduce conclusions when you make another time the, the electrode and you are going to have the same form but uh, different amount of reaction and perhaps something different. Can you make some comments about that? It's a very good point and it's, it's a good question how far can you interpret? Yeah, is it possible to get weight constants? Is it possible to get a diffusion coefficient? And, and so, for example, for the measurement of the diffusion coefficient, I have a method which is independent of area and independent of concentrations using two electrons. And so, it, there are sort of ways to extract information by filtering out problems like having a different area or even particle size. A particle size is a problem. So, so, usually, we want do SDM, we, we do electron microscopy to look at what are the particle sizes. But a lot of these processes obviously are so, so small scale that we can't find the products using electron microscopy. So um, I think it's, it's a really good question and uh, there's no good answer. <laughs> <laughs> you speak about bit earlier of yes. some of your in this case, I was seeing the, the bit area, 30 meters by gram, and he was speaking about uh, a, a organic material, generally it is uh, not very, uh, very uh, weighted materials. Uh, but uh, you are right to 1,000 in the other uh, How do you do? The measurement. Yeah. We have you, you have a very big electrode. No, no, it's not the electrode. Ah. It's a powder. Oh. And so it's a powder. Oh. Yeah, when I mean, the synthesis of the polymer is done, the product is powder. And, and it's just a microcrystal component. And so we took half a gram of the powder and we took this to Professor James Stewart in Cardiff. And so they have the BT machine. And so they use about 100 milligram material for every cycle. And they, they did several measurements to, to determine the BET. They run the forward and the backward cycle. And so it's, it's not the electrode. That's actually about 100 milligram of powder. And it's a standard kind of analysis. And the core size distribution is it's, um, it's a sort of software which sort of fills the, the to measure pores with certain objects to give a distribution of the sizes. If you have some paper, uh, yes. you can uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you.